Thank you for joining us for this panel session, How to Build a World-Class Modern Data Stack. My name is Lindsay Noonan. I'm the Director of Communications at ThoughtSpot, and I'm pleased to be joined by our panelists today. Laura Travers, Senior Business Partner of Data and Insights at Afterpay. Mark LaBelle, Global Director of Analytics at Ecolab. And Elisa Murariu, Data Analytics Manager at OrderPay. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. As we know, the right stack is crucial to the success of an organization and building a data stack, let alone perfecting one, is no easy task. In this session today, we're gonna to be discussing how to build a best of breed stack and cater it to your organization's needs. So let's get started. I'd love to kick off with just a round of introductions. So um, Elisa, why don't you start us off? Please tell us a little bit about yourself, your role, and what does a modern data stack mean to you? Hi, everyone. Uh, pleasure to, to be part of this panel. Um, order Pay is the most comprehensive order and pay solution on the market. Uh, we offer click and collect, order now, pay now, order now, pay later, tango. And we work with a large portfolio of venues, such as restaurants, pubs and bars, um, sports venues, universities, hotels, and um, in terms of data, we have a very small data team here at Order Pay. So together with my manager, we look after everything related to data from data integration, um, AI analysis, reporting, data modeling. Many hats. Laura, how about yourself? Hi there, thanks for having me. So I'm Laura and I work in the insights for Afterpay. Afterpay is an Australian fintech company, and we offer a buy now, pay later service to consumers. And we've now launched in the US and Europe as well. So we're becoming a global company. We allow customers to purchase products or services from participating merchants and pay for them over four interest-free installments over per a period of six weeks. As the data and insights lead within North America merchant relationships, my role is to work really closely with our strategic merchants and provide solutions and actionable insights that help them achieve their business goals. The other key focus for myself globally is democratizing data throughout the company by scaling insights resources and upskilling our external facing teams to be able to interpret and present data. Thanks, Laura. And Marv, last but not least. Hi, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, I work for Ecolab, and Ecolab is a global company operating in over 160 countries with revenues exceeding 14 billion and we have over 48,000 associates. At Ecolab, we partner to make the world cleaner, safer, and healthier, helping our customers succeed while protecting the people and resources that are vital to life. My global team is part of our enterprise data or office, and we focus on the consumption side of our modern analytics platform, helping our business associates gain insights through reporting and analytics. And our major objective is to transform our organization and establish a data-driven culture. Thank you, Mark. Well, at, just to set the stage for this discussion, um, let's start with each of your ThoughtSpot journeys. Mark, would you like to, to kick us off? What initially triggered you to search for a new BI tool? And how did you find ThoughtSpot? Sure. Um, so we migrated a lot of our disparate data marts over 25 years into an enterprise platform, right? Primarily with Snowflake. And our internal customers really wanted to go beyond the enterprise reporting and really ask the question of why am I seeing these KPIs, whether they were correct or incorrect, really wanted to deep dive into the transactional data. And to do that in Snowflake, obviously, as a SQL data warehouse, you needed to have SQL skills. And we really wanted to enable our business associates to interrogate the data in more of a natural language, if you want, right? So how could we enable anyone in the company to access and interrogate the data to get to answers much quicker than the traditional way, which would be to engage an IT team, develop uh, Power BI reports and so on. How could we democratize that access and really enable people to ask questions, almost Google-like, right, onto the data um, and really get answers really quick. Mark, at, at ThoughtSpot, we like to talk about that as um, the curiosity tax, getting rid of the curiosity tax, allowing anybody to be able to ask questions of your business data and to drill down and ask the next question, right? 
Um, so before we go on to the next panelist, can you tell us a little bit more about how you're seeing ThoughtSpot show up within the business? What use cases are have been, um, you know, m most popular to date? Sure. Um, you know, I think for us, really, there was a community of sales support finance analysts, really, right? And we had maybe 200, 300 users. But because of the, as you said, the tax of really working with that data, there were really only about 25 that were so-called Power BI experts. And what we really wanted to do was enable everyone throughout a different area. So our primary use case is around commercial sales, right? How do we drive um, growth around sales? How can we get them access to data that will really help them drive our sales growth but then we also started seeing folks around, hey, our supply chain is like, hey, this looks really interesting. How can I get access to it? So supply chain got in the bandwagon, right? And then the other one is at Ecolab, we're a very large company and sometimes our processes get in the way and how could we optimize our order to cash process? And so really enabling folks to get at the data to really determine where are the roadblocks in our order to cash process to make it seamless for our customers to do business with us. So it's starting to spread, right? We started with sales, people heard about it in supply chain, supply chain jumped in and now ordered the cash and jumping in. So within three months, we went from about 10 users to over 175 users. Wow, the groundswell effect. All right, Mark, we'll come back to you. Thank you. Laura, how about yourself? Can you start to tell us a little bit about Afterpay's ThoughtSpot journey and, and why you set out to find the new BI tool? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think it's a very similar journey, although very different product to what Mark was talking about. So at Afterpay, we have a vast amount of data and we, we do have data and insights tools that allow users to be able to consume dashboards that are kind of locked and look at their KPIs and review how the business is going. But there was that need for users without SQL skills to be able to interrogate the data and go beyond seeing the one KPI on a page and say, all right, well, let's drill down into that and see what are the drivers behind that metric or the drivers behind that performance. So I think for us, looking into ThoughtSpot and what it could do for our users, it was really about enabling them to be able to dig into that detail. And like you said earlier, sort of remove that curiosity tax. It was no more logging a ticket and waiting for someone in analytics to have the bandwidth to be able to answer it they could actually drill into them, drill into the hypothesis themselves and look into it and get an answer really quickly. That's great. And and so similarly, what, what are some of the most uh, popular use cases at Afterpay? So at Afterpay, our initial rollout has been primarily to our sales and marketing teams and functions, and we've seen some really excellent adoption rates. So being able to build for them performance within the sales team of how their merchants are performing and looking into marketing and how their campaigns are performing, but then giving them the ability to be able to drill into the detail on it has been really, really helpful. Um, we've also been using it with senior management. I mean, although there's a hesitancy with some senior management to log into the tool themselves, what we've seen with ThoughtSpot is within meetings live, we're able to answer the questions that they have and give them the data and show them in real time what's sort of driving our results and where that's coming from, which has been really, really empowering. Um, our main focus is trying to empower those functional teams by giving them presentation ready visuals that they can take and use within external facing presentations, but also being able to shift and edit and adapt them to their particular use case. So we found it really helpful. Thank you, Laura. Um, and Elisa, would you tell us a little bit about your analytics journey? What what led you down that journey? How did you come to ThoughtSpot? What did that look sure, like? like? Sure, just like uh, Laura and Mark, we had the need to make data available to everyone in the company without them having to have any SQL skills um, or the pay guru as an organization from um, you know having two employees at the end of 2019 to having quite a few end, end users that had to be able to use data. Um, Initially, we had a pretty basic BI tool that was free of charge, but required people knowledge to do any data analysis, any data interpretation, or any report. Um, and as we grew as an organization, the sources of data that we use grew as well. Our data volume grew, the number of end users grew, and also the number of operators that we work with and had to provide the insights and reports to also increased. So 
um, we went to the market to search for a new BI tool and uh, we came across ThoughtSpot. We were impressed by how easy it was to find very quick answers to data related questions. Uh, and we realized uh, it has huge potential and it will free up a lot of our time because we will not have to answer small queries. We will not have to write SQL code ourselves or for example, the marketing team or product team to get um, to get um, answers to small queries. Um, and we decided to go with ThoughtSpot and we haven't looked back ever since was definitely the good decision for us. So you mentioned you had many more data sources coming into play. It was getting bec becoming a more complicated um, structure and, and program and what you were looking to do in, in reaching you know, your non-technical users and being able to give them analytics. So can you tell us a little bit more, Lisa, about what other tools are in your stack right now that is helping you grow your program and reach your end users? And how, how does ThoughtSpot complement them? Sure. Um, we have Fivetran as our ELT tool, um, which is very reliable. And it does what any ELT tool should do, just work work in the background without us having to check uh, the data pipeline. Uh, we have Snowflake as our data warehouse. We use CBT to do our data transforms and ThoughtSpot for reporting and analysis. The way they complement each other, obviously, we connect ThoughtSpot to Snowflake to, to get the data from there. Um, our EL2, ELT tool um, is able to load data from our different platforms and, and sources in a reliable and efficient way. Um, and um, our, we, we trained our end users to get the answer they need themselves from ThoughtSpot. Um, so they all work pretty simply together, and they complement each other, and they do the heavy lifting for us. That's great. And let's come back to that later about adoption and, and training your staff and um, helping helping to scale. Um, Mark, I'd, I'd love to turn it to you now. You know, Can you share a little bit more about how you're using ThoughtSpot in the mix of the rest of your stack and, and what does the rest of your stack look like at Ecolab? Sure. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a big SAP shop, right? So our ERP that manages roughly 80% of our revenue is on SAP. We bring that data into our Azure data lake, into a raw data form, because we also have a very advanced analytics team looking at raw data and working with machine data as well. We take that data out of Azure and bring it into Snowflake, right? Because our basic strategy within IT is kind of a cloud first strategy. So we've got Snowflake and then, you know, uh, obviously, at the beginning that we started pre-ThoughtSpot, we had Power BI, but as, as Laura mentioned, you get really bound models based on the capability, and that's okay for enterprise reporting, canned reporting. Um, so we still allow that going, and that still has a, a play in, in our platform. But then we also, as I mentioned, we really wanted to get at that granular data and really talk about the why. And I think Elisa mentioned too, hey, we're starting to see you know, folks would bring Power BI to the to their executive meeting or the management review. Someone had a question, and it was always like, "Well, I'm going to have to get back to you because, right, the Power BI model is kind of bound." And we're starting to see now ThoughtSpot say, "Bring that in. We can still have Power BI, but if we want to really ask answer your question fairly quickly in the meeting, we started bringing in ThoughtSpot in the meeting, and people are asking questions, saying, "I can answer that right now. Let's query it together." And, you know, usually what happens is a question happens and then someone says, hey, well, what about this? And then you start answering it right into the meeting. So we think the stack makes sense. It's flexible. It's modular. And then we've established that, hey, we're not here to replace Power BI. We're here to augment. Um, each tool has a different role, right? And so that's how we're, we're looking at it at this point. The power of thought. Exactly. And, and so you have several tools in your stack. Um, there's some migration happening. There's a lot of data movement happening from Azure to Snowflake. With your cloud first strategy, um, how was it, how did you find deploying and implementing ThoughtSpot? How was that for your team? And how did you prepare to manage right. that? Right, I think for us, it was it was fairly, fairly simple, right? So at the end of the day, Snowflake is a data warehouse. And if you model your data properly, right, with dimensions and facts, um, for us was really in ThoughtSpot, just building a semantic model, right? We didn't, we use the cloud version, so we didn't have to load data into the platform. 
basically just connect that spot to the snowflake dimensions in fact and then the beauty of it is we could just establish an enterprise worksheet and then start looking at different groups and even allowing them to take a subset and allowing them to build their own worksheets obviously with the right training right but now now we we manage as an IT team the enterprise worksheet and the business has the ability to build their own worksheets on top of the enterprise worksheet so as we enable more data we just communicate to them hey we've exposed more data go ahead and connect to it if you'd like Laura I see you nodding along as Mark describes his journey so did you have a similar experience at Afterpay in terms of what it was like deploying Voxbot um, and and managing that process with your team? Yeah, it's just it's it's funny to me the similarities. So we also have connected Voxbot straight into Snowflake, and the way that we went about it is our our data were very lucky. It's very structured, so we basically were able to supercharge a lot of our orders, customer, merchant data and get that into ThoughtSpot as like our master worksheet and just enable users to be querying that directly. Um, but one of the things that resonated with me is as we've been iterating and getting more and more data into ThoughtSpot, it can literally be as quick as someone saying, oh, this table in Snowflake, are we able to see that in ThoughtSpot and slice and dice it? And then, you know, within a couple of hours, we've got that data exposed to the users and they can be looking at it. So yeah, just a lot of similarities between Mark and my journeys, I think. Elisa, I'd like to go back to you for a moment. You've talked about the order pays use of DBT and Fivetran and Snowflake, and you obviously have a, a robust modern stack. Um, why did you focus on on building this best of breed stack, and and how are you seeing this really maximize the business value at order pay? Well, for us, it was key to um, to be able to uh, connect to our data sources transform data and, and democratize data in a very efficient way, given the fact that we're a very small team looking after everything related to, to data or their pay. Um, we wanted to respond to the needs of the business now, but we also wanted to have in place a data tool set that allows us to answer to the needs of the business in the future as well. Um, so think about sources of data that we have now, but also sources of data that we will have in the future that we'll want to get get and get data from um our data changes constantly we need it to be able to keep up with these changes in terms of structure as well as the volume um on an ongoing basis uh and we also wanted to be able to answer data questions fast or better said to enable our end users to answer the data questions themselves without us having to uh hold their hand for every small query because we simply don't have the, the time to do that if we are to uh, support the business with more strategic tasks. So for us, uh, it was key to have um, um, a stack that actually does the heavy lifting for us, is reliable, efficient, and enables us to uh, keep up with the needs of the business uh, as we are a growing organization. Laura, can you could you share a bit more about um, at Afterpay, you know, the value that you're seeing out of your best of breed stack, and and maybe share with us what's been your biggest win since building out your stack. Um, so I would think in terms of the the business value that we get from having a best in breed data stack, for me, it's all about sort of the the buzzwords, but enablement and empowerment. So it's really making sure that the business uses. Uh, empowered to be able to leverage the data that we have at our fingertips to make better data-driven decisions and drive strategy for the business. So I think that that's been the real value that having um, ThoughtSpot as part of our data stack has driven. Um, then I would also say in terms of the biggest win, I would say it's generally the team feedback. So it's the feedback that people in the business have given us in terms of you've saved hours of my time in having these live boards available for me to be able to present to merchants. I would have waited a week to get this answer from someone in the team, but I was able to go back to the merchant today. It's all the it's the the nice things you hear from people in the business that you are empowering and enabling. It's seeing the little small wins in each and every day. They kind of add up to the big win for me. I love that. Mark, how about at Ecolab and you and your team, what's been the big win? Um, you know, we, we've got a concrete example. So supply chain has been looking at a 
where we deliver product on pallets and there's partial pallets, full pallets, and we have contract obligations with our distributors. And back in the supply chain team, they were like, this is too long. We know there's money to get after, but I don't know how to get after it. And it's going to take really a long time. And we kind of sat down with them and said, hey, let's just take a look at this, right? We've got all the data you want now. And within 72 hours, we literally found a $3 million opportunity savings within supply chain. And I think a lot of it was just the fact that they were so conditioned that it's going to take forever to wrangle this data. And it was already pre-wrangled, right? And to build up on what Laura and Eliza were saying is, Elisa, sorry, um, there's so much wrangling of data that's going on today, right? You come in in the morning, a couple of our finance analysts have to sit down, get the data, download it, wrangle it, get to the, the response that they need. Now we've taken all of that away. They just log in, there's their KPI, and they can move on and do other things. So for us, we've got some concrete, quantifiable big wins but the little wins are starting to really make a difference because now instead of spending two hours every morning downloading, wrangling that data, I see my KPI. Now I've got time to do other things. I can ask other questions. And sometimes the questions they ask may not lead to anything, but more and more questions are being asked. And if you're asking, you know, a hundred questions and 20% lead to something, that's incredible value that was not realized before. That's an incredible anecdote, Mark, that Ecolab has in, in understanding the real business value and business ROI from the investments that you've made in your modern data stack and being able to connect the dots from the tech impact to the business impact is something that I think many in our field are you know, on that journey and, and looking to do. Um, so really happy that we've been able to help you help you do that. And, right. um, and we've been, you know, we've invested literally millions of dollars in the whole platform, right? And everybody's like, great that you've invested, but what are you actually delivering to the business from value? And now we're, we can quantify, right? So yes, we have a N number million dollar investment, but now we're actually tracing it down to, you want it to drive sales growth. You want it to find 10% OI reduction or, or increase or whatever it is, or, or productivity. We're now drawing those direct lines by putting this in place, getting the data to the right people. Here are the quantifiable benefits that they get, and we're tying it right to Ecolab's strategic growth strategy for the next five years. Well, congratulations. That's a big feat. Um, and some of the, you know, you said smaller wins, but this change in behavior and increase in data fluency and incremental time savings all add up to make an impact as well, right? And, and that's what Laura was saying is similar um, similar takeaways at, at Afterpay. How about at OrderPay, Elisa? What has been some of your team's biggest wins? Um, time back was definitely a big, big win for us. Um, not only with ThoughtSpot, but also in terms of our data pipeline. I, st I still remember when we had to wake up every morning to check our data pipeline, which we no longer have to do. Um, and also, we don't have to, as, as Mark was, was mentioning just now, we don't have to spend time on those small queries to support the different uh, teams in the business because they can go into ThoughtSpot and get them themselves. Uh, and so we have time to focus on more strategic tasks. For example, we have a new source of data, focus on integrating that and model the data and load that into Snowflake so that you know it's connected to ThoughtSpot and available to our users. So. That has been key in term in, in, in addition to time, um, access to various data sources. We now have time to focus on those, focus on more strategic uh, projects. But also I would say that the learning has been a two-way street because it wasn't just us teaching our end users how to use data and ThoughtSpot, but by democratizing data and giving them access, uh, we got to see what queries they have, what kind of questions they would like answers for, um, and by putting, putting the data at their fingertips, um, we got to see what kind of insights they're interested in that, and maybe insights that they didn't think they needed before. Um, and so that led to us being an even more data driven organization and us learning from different departments as well, which you can't really quantify, 
that clearly, as Mark was saying earlier, but I think on the long, long term, it's a big win. Yeah, I'm, it definitely is. And each one of you are at the forefront of driving this data-driven change within your organizations, building the data fluency, building your teams, democratizing the data throughout the company. Um, you're all you know, leading the charge here, you and your teams, and you've described some of the impacts that it's had to date. Where do you see it going and, and how are you measuring it as well? Elisa, do you want to start? We are definitely constantly keeping an eye on uh, engagement um, and active users, daily users, super users as well. Uh, what like words are most used, what words are um, used the most in the searches for data. Uh, so increasing engagement and um, interaction with ThoughtSpot is definitely key for us. Um, we also keep an eye on how much time we're saving by by not answering small queries and um, enabling our users to use data themselves. Um, so yeah, I think for us, it's, it's engagement uh, and time saved as well as uh, obviously resources saved in terms of, of money as well by us as data professionals focusing on other projects. Mark, similarly at Ecolab, huge multinational corporation, you are at the forefront of leading this change, um, developing a data-driven culture and organization. Tell us a little bit about how you're seeing that unfold, what impact you're trying to have and where you see this, this going for, for yourself, for your team and for Ecolab. Right. So, you know, as right now we're, we're very focused on our, if I would say kind of our internal team in the office running, um, thought spot, but we literally started dreaming up in a small team of, Hey, thought spot everywhere, right? We have 25 to 30,000 field associates that are working with customers every day and they get asked questions, right? And we always have a back end field support system, but we're starting to look at, you know, a couple of things of, could we have ThoughtSpot everywhere within the organization, right? Whether it starts at the executive that are meeting large executive accounts or just our own field folks that are interacting with customers, how could they, in, in, you know, interrogate the data to get what they need, right? Whether it's, you know, hey, I'm, I want to find out a little bit more about sales for this customer in the last three months, but not really have it as a formal, hey, I've got to write a, a ThoughtSpot query, even though it's, it's fairly simple. Right. So we're working with, with ThoughtSpot right now around the chat GPT, uh, integration, the whole natural language processing. So really, if I want to ask a question of what were my sales for institutional last year, it sounds very simple, but if you start thinking about fiscal calendars and periods are different across the globe, how can the platform, you know, interpret that to really bring back that response, right? So those are the things we're really talking about. How do we integrate? ThoughtSpot, ChatBot into everybody at the organization, right? It's a little out there, but it's really possible to get there. And we're working really hand in hand with ThoughtSpot to figure out how can we set that vision and work our way there. It's definitely possible. And we're very excited to be on that journey with you. This has been such a wonderful discussion. There ha absolutely are commonalities across industries, across geos. Um, you know, building a, a modern data stack and a best of breed stack is not a, a, a one, one solution. Um, and so we really thank you all for sharing your stories and for engaging in this conversation. A big thank you to our presenters, Laura, Mark, Elisa. Thank you for your time today. That's a wrap on this session. If you want to learn more on how to best perfect your modern data stack, please scan the QR code to read about the six requirements of the modern data and analytics stack. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you at the next session.